being out of Jamaica and servicing the Caribbean, there is not a whole lot of geospatial companies in the region. And so that has kind of forced us to also do more based on what our clients have demanded. We do things from your geospatial data collection and analysis. We also provide advisory and consultancy services on your GIS and your remote sensing projects. We do quite a bit in geospatial implementation and planning and the whole strategic planning, project management and implementation for varied projects. And this could be from your disaster risk management projects, from your health related project, education, environmental management. But we also can be your GIS department. <laughs> so you can outsource your GIS needs to us. And we do quite a bit in the area of training and capacity building as well. Hello and welcome to WGIC, the World Geospatial Industry Council. Our guest tonight is Valerie Grant, founder and chairperson, Geotech Vision. Valerie, thank you so much for joining this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Valerie, you're a very multifaceted person wearing a number of hats. You're an award-winning entrepreneur, having set up a geotech vision. You're an author, a podcast host, and you're also the deputy chair of UNGGIM Private Sector Network, and most importantly, the an advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion in the geospatial industry. My friend, how do you accomplish so much in a 24-hour day and a five-day week? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. And some <laughs> of my friends will tell you that I'm great at time management and prioritization. So I, it's a lot, but I do try to focus on setting clear goals, delegating tasks, and leveraging a very, very supportive team. And when I speak about my team, I'm just not talking about work-related team. I also talking about family members who give me absolute support in much of what I do. Additionally, I like to really just work on the things that I'm passionate about and I had varied interests. And I think if I wasn't involved in so many things, then I'm one of those persons who would get very little done if I'm not very busy. <laughs> and so each of the roles that I'm involved in, they really drive me to accomplish more each day. And it's something that I enjoy. It's something, it's always, I say no to things, but I only say yes to the things that I'm very passionate about. I'm a firm believer that every day is day one. And because every day is day one, we have a new beginning just with the added bonus of having the lessons of yesterday to learn from. Okay, I learned two secrets from you now. To start every day as the first day and to pursue your passion, right? Absolutely. Okay, with that introduction, let's get dive deep into understanding Geotech Vision. Uh, I see that Geotech Vision brings qualified and experienced professionals to provide clients with geospatial and ICT consultancy, right? So, Willie, can you enumerate yeah. the consulting and advisory services offered under Geotech Vision banner? Yeah, so Geotech Vision being out of Jamaica and servicing the Caribbean, there is not a whole lot of geospatial companies in the region. And so that has kind of forced us to also do more based on what our clients have demanded of us. And so we do things from your geospatial data collection and analysis. We also provide advisory and consultancy services on your GIS and your remote sensing projects. We do quite a bit in geospatial implementation and planning and the whole strategic planning, project management and implementation for varied projects. And this could be from your disaster risk management projects, from your health related project, education, environmental management. But we also, can be your GIS department. <laughs> so you can outsource your GIS needs to us. And we do quite a bit in the area of training and capacity building as well as providing some customized software development. But one thing we pride ourselves on is that we always start all of our engagements with that user requirement analysis, getting to know our customers so that we can really truly advise them as to what is the best path to take. 
All right. Thank you so much for enumerating that. Uh, you talked about uh, human capacities, and uh, I would like to understand what kind of human capacity gaps do you perceive in the geospatial industry in general and uh, in Caribbean in specific? And how is the uh, geotech vision training and development services filling these gaps? Well, I think, you know, like our industry, we, space, we face uh, a skills shortage, right? We face a skills shortage. And so particularly in the areas of advanced technical skills, data analytics, or even in terms of using the technology sometimes, we find that there is a shortage of skilled professionals, especially in the Caribbean region. And so one of the things that we have been doing is that we recognize that there is a need to build greater awareness and understanding about geospatial, its application and its capabilities. And in order to address these gaps, we have been providing targeted training programs through our academy, through workshops, through and these are really designed to enhance the proficiency and to promote the practical application of geospatial technologies. Nobody does geospatial just for the sake of doing. And as we see at WGIC, it's always in service of something, right? So it's always yeah. to accomplish a challenge to make sure that we can we, we can overcome that particular challenge. And so we we help persons to see what that low hanging fruit is and we show them how they can use geospatial in those manners. And in using geospatial, a lot of time, you know, they, the light bulbs go off and they start thinking about, oh, so we could actually start doing this. And most of our training are designed in such a way that we handhold. So by the time they get back to their office, they are in that mode and they're able to start implementing a project. All right. That's a good uh, service uh, to the industry as well. So I also see that uh, Geotech Vision is an authorized retailer for several companies, bringing a number of products and services to the Caribbean region, right? So how do you leverage the partner strengths in providing your services? So we recognize that we're a small company and together we can definitely be stronger. We really extend our reach by partnering with global providers, leading providers, and we leverage their advanced technology, and not only their technology, we also leverage their expertise in delivering innovative solutions to our clients. And so by leveraging these partner strengths, we are able to provide, whether it's cutting edge software, whether it's hardware, whether it's some kind of specialized knowledge that we may not have had in house, we yeah. can offer these tailored services that address the unique needs of our clients in the Caribbean region. Okay, so uh, you talked about uh, providing innovative solutions and services. Would you want to enumerate what kind of services Geotech Vision uh, provides, uh, facil I mean, facilitates uh, in the Caribbean? Oh, so we provide quite a bit of services. This include from our UAV um, surveying and remote sensing. So all things UAV, we, we have been providing that, whether it's environmental monitoring and assessment. I have spoken to the fact that we provide consultancy services in the areas of disaster risk resilience and how geospatial really supports that. We have um, provided services in the area of geospatial for health information we have provided services to 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 businesses to how they can use location intelligence whether that be in citing a new location or how they can use it to enhance their marketing efforts so we do quite a, a wide range um as i said you know it's, a lot of it is also driven by our customer needs Okay, so in that sense, uh, uh, would you want to enumerate uh, your disaster management services with the, in the recent uh, backdrop of in the backdrop of the recent uh, hurricane in the Caribbean and the East Coast? Okay. So um, Geotech Vision has been very supportive of whatever efforts in the region, and that includes, you know, capturing drone imagery. But one of the things that we are currently working on is that we are working on uh, developing through another arm, through our Jamaica Flying Labs team, which oh, is sponsored by Geotech Vision. We are working with Sedema to create uh, some frameworks and some documentations and standards operating procedures as to how 
uncrewed aerial services can be integrated in disaster risk resilience. So that is something that is currently ongoing. But like we, whenever there is a disaster, we volunteer our efforts, we support mapping initiatives, we provide advice to the different countries. And I, in my capacity as advisor to the organization of Eastern Caribbean states, I'm integrally involved in their response efforts as well. That's a great service, I, I would say. Thank you so much enumerating that. So right now, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Geotech Vision is focused uh, in the Caribbean uh, in doing its business. Uh, are you also looking to expand and explore new geographies as well? Absolutely. So one of the geographies that we are starting to do some business in is in um, Florida, in US, and we are looking elsewhere as well to 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 expand our geography and to do business elsewhere. Geotech Vision has actually done business across the globe in the sense that we have done some business in Africa and we have also done some business in the Pacific. Um, that has not been consistent. And so that is something that in the future we're looking to do more of. Fantastic. I would say once you are a geospatial player, world is your playground. Isn't Absolutely, it? I totally agree. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, the second part of this conversation, uh, Valerie, is around uh, Geotech Vision's association with WGIC. I see that Geotech Vision is a, one of the founding members of WGIC and continues to be a very active member. I would like to understand what got Geotech Vision to come into the mission of WGIC six years ago. Apart from the persuasive uh, nature of Sanjay Kumar, <laughs> we, uh, we were really drawn to the mission of fostering global collaboration and innovation in the geospatial industry. And so um, our commitment really, I would say, stemmed from that shared vision of leveraging geospatial technologies for sustainable development in addressing some of our most enduring challenges, right? And so over the years, our engagement with WGIC has allowed us to contribute to important initiatives, um, has allowed us to, to, to suggest areas mm -hmm. that the organization should be looking at. I, I uh, you know, DI is one of those areas that I'm proud to say that it was because of our prodding <laughs> that we started to look at that. And so we have really learned from others as well, and we have engaged in useful partnerships. And we have been able to say, this is something that you need to pay attention to. And we have seen where the organization has listened. So that has it's been that kind of relationship. OK. Fantastic. So uh, you mentioned very clearly it's about uh, global collaboration uh, uh, with like-minded uh, uh, companies and also expanding uh, the value proposition of this technology, right? So in your long association uh, with WGIC, how did uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, collaboration materialized into something very fruitful? Have there been any instances? Would you want to cite any such collaboration or uh, uh, value exchange where you have done uh, during uh, your recent in interactions? I feel as though we, I, I have a network, a vast network of industry leaders where I could always call on. And if there is an issue, if there is um, a need to be able to tap to find some information, to get some useful feedback, I could always reach out to these experts. And so um, that I find has been the benefit of being associated with WGIC, being able to call on persons, being able to get that kind of advice, as well as to to know that where you do not have a particular strength, then it could be extended by members of the organization. That's really nice to know. Great. So in this uh, ba in the backdrop of an accelerated technology and industry transformation, which is what we are witnessing uh, in the last few years, how do you see the role and significance of WGIC moving forward? I, I think that WGIC really has to play a, a critical role in terms of navigating what is really a 
rapidly evolving geospatial landscape. Uh, and, and one of the things that WGIC has to continue to do is to advocate for policy frameworks that support industry growth. I think it's important, like you're doing, to showcase member capabilities and to encourage joint projects. Yes. And as the technology continues to advance, I believe that WGIC's role is going to be in terms of facilitating that kind of global collaboration and knowledge exchange and ensuring that the industry remains resilient, <laughs> remains adaptive. And I think a critical role that WGIC will have to play is really reaching out beyond our industry, tapping into other industries to ensure that persons understand the value of geospatial and how that can assist in addressing some of the critical challenges. And I think that is going to be a critical role because, you know, um, oftentimes we are too insular. We to look too much inwards in terms of our own industry. And if WGIC can really help to, us to branch out to other industries so that they can recognize the pivotal role that we can assist with in terms of supporting what the, it is that they are doing. Okay, thank you so much. I am completely aligned with your thinking on this. Yeah, uh, the third part of this conversation is your passion subject, uh, Valerie. <laughs> it's about the diversity, equity, and inclusion. And you're a very strong believer of DEI, right? And um, especially with respect to having women in technology and entrepreneurship. I would like to know your thoughts on the need for having a diverse workforce and an inclusive culture in any company. I think it's just absolutely necessary. Um, uh, you know, a diverse workforce and an inclusive culture has to be the D in the DNA of any organization at this point in time, because it's not only essential for fostering innovation and creativity, but it's also essential for building resilience and it's going to impact the bottom line. I mean, I think by now we should recognize that the diversity dividend is well articulated as to what it does to the bottom line. And if you don't have diversity, then soon you'll start seeing it in those PNL statements. Diversity brings different perspectives. It brings ideas. It brings your solve problem solving approaches which are very important in addressing complex challenges and i think for small and medium organizations sometimes we think about it and we think oh this is just for the big companies no it's not we need to start looking at some of these good practices we need to recognize that we need to implement unbiased recruiting and hiring processes because sometimes we we can be very informal about it but we we need to put those processes in place and we need to also once we have that team in place it's important that we level the playing field that we provide equal opportunities for professional development and advancement because that is going to be critical in anybody's growth and development and we need to create that inclusive workplace environment that really values and respect all of our employees. I personally am a big believer in encouraging mentorship and supportive network and sponsoring, especially those groups that are underrepresented. And mm -hmm. we need to promote transparency in communication and feedback mechanism. That's going to be important if we are really supposed to move the needle as it relates to having that diverse and inclusive workforce. Fantastic. I have goosebumps as you say that. I really am resonating with what you're saying. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Valerie. Thank you for your time and this conversation. I so thoroughly enjoyed this. Mm -hmm.